This is Network 18. And you are watching CNBC TV 18. Driving innovation, delivering affordability, that is the mantra of this over 25-year-old company that started with 10,000 rupees. While it may have had humble beginnings, the present is full of potential and promise. A fully integrated biotechnology company that on the day of its listing had a market value of over a billion dollars. The future looks good. It promises to unlock more shareholder value through its insulin initiative, its contract manufacturing business as well as domestic formulations. The Mugairaj operation Biocon is today one of India's leading fully integrated healthcare companies with revenues of over 2,000 crore rupees. While Kiran Mazumdar Shaw has spent the past two decades charting out her corporate destiny, she's also tried to make Biocon a vehicle for change. Being in the business of health gave Kiran a first-hand insight into the failings of India's healthcare system. Mazum Darsho is a regular on the corporate power list. She's also a regular on the richest Indians list. But she's made it to another list that's not talked about very often, the altruistic business leaders list. While it does seem to sound pretentious, to put it simply, Kiran believes she has a social responsibility, a responsibility to make a difference to human life. And so she set up the Biocon Foundation in 2004 pretty much the same time that Biocon tapped the capital markets. Through the Biocon Foundation, Kiran has been trying to create awareness about public health and sanitation. But now the focus is on creating infrastructure to bridge the wide gap, especially at the primary healthcare level. Arogya Raksha Yojana Clinics are her way of bridging the deficit. Karen, many thanks for joining us on the Heart of Business. Let me start by asking you about the Biocon Foundation. What was the rationale behind starting the foundation when you started it in 2004? What were you hoping to achieve through this? The Biocon Foundation was something I started immediately after we IPO'd. That's right. And, uh, you know, to me, I felt that uh, having created wealth, mm. it was a very important for me to share this uh, this wealth with the community. Was there a clear roadmap? Was there a clear blueprint in terms of what you hope to achieve through the foundation? Well, you know, there was a lot of thinking behind what we were going to do through this foundation. Hmm. You know, it is a foundation that I have created with my personal wealth. And then Biocon partners me in many, many programs that uh, are relevant and which we feel as a company we should be supporting. So it's not an annual sort of, uh, you know, sum that goes in from Biocon towards the foundation. Well, we haven't really fixed on the kind of annual amount, except from my personal point of view, sure. I know that I contribute almost 30% of my dividends to this foundation. Mm. So, you know, when we conceptualized this whole foundation, I felt I had to look at some area where uh, we could do something that was transformational. Right. And being in the healthcare sector, we felt that, you know, healthcare is one big challenge for this country. How do you actually see corporate social responsibility? Do you think that, you know, it is your responsibility to partner with the state to deliver on things like education, healthcare, where the state fails, do you think it is your responsibility to pick up? The way I've looked at it is that, you know, business is very mercenary mm -hmm. and you've got to balance it with some missionary aspect. Okay. And to me, co corporate social responsibility responsibility is really getting that balance right huh. you know that you've got to make sure that you invest in the community that supports your business right I also believe that having a prosperous community also helps your business so hmm. you know it's 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 inclusive growth in hmm. the best possible way well you know you've been around with the Biocon Foundation for about five years now I'm sure you've gone through a self-evaluation exercise in terms of just how effective the foundation has been what have been the big lessons learned so far I think whenever you partner with other organizations it's very important to get complete alignment with hmm. the partner it's also about personalities and how passionate they are about what you're trying to do. But the moment there is a change of people right. or that, you know, suddenly the organization starts sort of looking at other opportunities. Right. 
uh, you lose that shared interest. And because there's no sort of institutionalized framework in that sense, how does it work? Because it really depends on how the CEO is driving it or how you know, the top management is actually yeah. driving these initiatives. Well, you know, the person who heads uh, Biocon Foundation, Rani Desai, she actually has been the one who's really been driving all these programs mm -hmm. for us. And I think she also has learned the hard way. And now we're trying to systematize everything we do. Huh. So, for instance, the, you know, we are, this whole micro health insurance program mm -hmm. works in the form of a network of clinics anchored by a large hospital. So, the kind of, uh, you know, association and relationships mm -hmm. that we have with these hospitals has now been very systematized. Uh, the way uh, we work in terms of setting up new clinics mm -hmm. and how these clinics mm -hmm. are to be set up that's been systematized and that is why I think this is the first year we are seeing a good level of success. The seven ARY clinics built so far are in remote areas of Karnataka and charge a nominal consultancy fee of 5 rupees. These primary healthcare facilities offer clinical care, a pharmacy stocked with generic drugs which are available at discounted rates. The Biocon Foundation has also set up a laboratory for basic diagnostic tests and mobile medical service facilities. Each clinic serves a population of 50,000 people living within a range of 10 kilometers. These clinics also support the Arogya Raksha Yojana Micro Health Insurance Program. Through the plan, a member can avail quality medical facilities for as little as 120 rupees per annum. Within five years of operation, the Arogya Raksha Yojana has already enrolled 100,000 members and facilitated more than 1,000 surgeries. With a 100% renewal rate in most villages, this insurance plan has touched the lives of almost 2,50,000 people so far. What was it like to get partners on board, ICICI, Lombard, for instance, to actually sell the idea of going and targeting below poverty families and getting the scheme on the ground? And what has now been the challenge of scaling this up? Uh, getting a partner was quite the easy, easy part because, you know, they also had some sort of uh, uh, a need to focus on rural health care. Mm. Okay? Uh, but at the same time, it was not a loss-making proposition sure. as far as they were concerned. Sure. So they were in it for the money, although the amount not, yeah. of money involved yeah. was not huge. And we had a wonderful model, a wonderful mm. experiment that they were willing to mm. partake in. Mm. And then, of course, came the challenges of reaching out to the rural populations and getting them mm. to buy into this concept of contributing to an insurance scheme. Mm. Because in their minds, it was easy for them to contribute 10 rupees a month. Yeah but it was tough for them to contribute 120 20 rupees, rupees at one time. And here the banks were not willing to kind of, uh, you know, bear the administrative cost of, of taking 10 rupees a month. And right. therefore we had to fix on that annual scheme. That's been a big challenge for us. Hmm. But what is interesting is that over the years, we are now almost into our fifth year of right. enrollment. Right. And today it's interesting to see that we have got 100% enrollment hmm. in many of the communities that we have introduced the scheme mm. to. The first two, three years were very difficult. Mm. We, the second year, for instance, in fact, was very disappointing because we only got 50% re-enrollment. This year, it's 100%. So it's catching on. People uh. are understanding what this whole scheme is about. Being covered by the ARY Micro Health Insurance Program has been a great benefit to people like Shamla. An abnormality was detected in her heartbeat when she was just 10 at the ARY clinic. Referred to the Narayana Hrudalia, one of the world's largest cardiac hospitals, Shamla was able to have a life-saving open-heart surgery absolutely free of cost. But is there plans now to take it beyond Bangalore, to move into other states, to sort of do a pan-India operation with this insurance scheme? Well, that is the kind of plan. That is the grand plan. But I think what we needed to, you know, sort of convince ourselves mm. is that the model works. We wanted to learn from all the mistakes we made mm. and then scale it up and take it outside. I think in the first few years, I would say up until three years ago, mm. 